Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice. To get involved, go to xyadvisor.com or simply download the XY Advisor app. This series, Deeper Client Relationships at Scale, is brought to you by My Prosperity, the all-in-one client portal and app designed to enhance your practice efficiencies, promote your digital brand, and grow your revenue. You can book a demo directly from the website. Go to myprosperity.com.au. Welcome back to the XY Advisor Podcast. I'm Fraser Jack and I'm joined by Carolina from My Prosperity. Welcome. Thanks, Fraser. And feel free to call me KK as uh, the whole industry knows me as. So um, thanks for having me here. No problem at all, KK. Now, today we're talking about all things around deeper cl- uh, client relationships at scale. And obviously, that's a, it's a pretty interesting topic. And we go through you know, the, the client relationships that people have. But before we go there, let's talk about you. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, I've been in the uh, tech industry for around 14 years. Uh, Prior to working at My Prosperity, I worked at MYOB, which I think uh, a lot of people have heard of that brand. And um, my role was a partner manager in the field. So I looked after around 100 accounting firms and the whole purpose was to help them move from desktop accounting software to the cloud. And obviously we had a competitor called Xero. Uh, on our heels. So uh, there was a lot of work to be done, but um, I loved being part of that transition process and seeing a lot of firms change and flourish. So um, that paved my way into the fintech world. And when I met Peter McCarthy, I just thought, wow, I love this vision about having a personal app on your phone and, and advisors being able to have data at their fingertips. This is amazing. So when I met Peter and anyone that has met Peter McCarthy, uh, he's just one of those um, people that make you feel really welcomed and, um, you know, he's just got a very bubbly personality and, and we hit it off and I thought, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm all in and uh, five years later, I'm still here and I'm loving it. Goodness me, five years. Interesting, isn't it? I'm, I mean, the the technology that's uh, come in the last sort of 10 years or so has been absolutely incredible. As you mentioned, the, it, when you were in my old moving everybody off uh, into the cloud and then obviously, you know, from there on, it's it's been a um, this amazing growth in what technology can do for people. Yeah, absolutely. Now tell us, so you've been there for five years. Goodness me, that's, uh, that's, um, that's a great stint. Tell us about how the, the evolution of those last five years have been. Yeah, so when I joined, I was employee number eight. Um, since then, we've tripled in size. We've we've um, grown quite incredibly in the market. Um, I think back then we only had about fifty odd clients. Now we've you know got well over five hundred. Um, you know, we we did a soft launch uh, globally as well. So uh, yeah, it's been incredible. It's it's been great. The the quality of people that we've hired at My Prosperity uh, have really. Uh, been not only very uh, intelligent and great what they do, but we're, we're very much a family. So, um, you know, we're, we're not a giant company like Zero yet, but, uh, but we've still got that family feel. And, um, and I love our vision because at the end of the day, it's very similar to what financial advisors do. We just want to help, you know, Australians get their financial, you know, fi- personal finances sorted. And that's what financial advisors want. So the synergy is there. Yeah, this is really interesting. Having been in technology myself for a long time, to to see the evolution of how uh, technology startups become sort of more mature companies, and you know, I always sort of think that the startups can do some such amazing things. They're nimble, and then and then they sort of have that maturity level, and um, and people sort of don't always jump on the startup uh, train, do they? They sort of wait till companies been around them. And you sort of think about technology companies being an overnight success in, in, in 10 years from when they start up. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, and, and this year will be our 10th year. And, um, you know, we've invested a lot of money and, and hard work. And, um, you know, I think advisors don't realize sometimes how much work goes into technology and all the integrations and, and the pressure that we get. Um, so we are always working very hard in the background and taking on a lot of feedback to um, provide a good solution. 
Yeah, it's interesting. When I first uh, started uh, as an advisor thinking about technology, it was all very simple. It was going to be very easy just to do a quick, you know, make, make technology. It sounds very simple, but certainly after working in technology for some time, it's a bit more complicated than that. <laughs> now tell us about, um, okay, so you're, so you're there. You're, what's your role there now? Yeah, so I've grown. So when I first joined My Prosperity, I was um, the territory manager for Vic Taz, and then um, that grew into the national business development role. Um, and in the last six months, I've had a promotion to be the head of Wealth Channel. So because we're growing quite rapidly, we've decided to, um, I guess, have two unique channels for uh, the, the company. So we've got an accounting channel and we've got a financial planning channel. And I remember Peter asking me which channel I'd like to sort of drive. And I, I, I sort of thought, you know what, I've done the accounting in the past. Um, I've made some really great relationships um, on the advice uh, or, or in the advice industry. And so I, yeah, it was, it was a no brainer for me. I just said, yep, I want to, I want to keep going with the advice side. And I've got a lot of great advisors in my network and I want to keep um, driving it. So that that's my role there, head of growth for the financial planning side. Fantastic. And uh, well, you've come to the right place then in that case. Uh, so certainly with the relationships, it's an interesting one, isn't it? They're sort of, they're very different, the, the relationships that accountants have with that than financial planners. Yeah, look, um, in a way, I guess um, when you look at uh, an accounting firm, a lot of the work that they do um, is very ATO driven. Um, you need to get your BASs done. You need to get your tax returns done. Um, I think in terms of advice and when you look at even a lot of the um, firms that we have on board at My Prosperity, a lot of their clients are actually pre-retirees because they're the ones that can actually have afford ongoing advice. Um, so uh, I think there is a lot of room um, for, I guess, making advice a, a little bit more, I guess, affordable for for mainstream Australians and, and getting them to understand the value of advice and those foundations. And and one thing I really loved about what Conrad said um, in obviously with the, uh, the the client interviews that that were were recorded previously, he mentioned about the foundations of a house. If your foundations aren't right, then you're going to have issues with the house. Um, and I love that because that's the same with, with getting your financial advice sorted at a younger age to make sure that you can live a comfortable life and retire early and, and achieve those goals. Um, so you don't know what you don't know. So um, I think there's a lot of ways that we can, um, you know, market the importance of advice into our industry. Um, we've just got to figure out ways to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, as you mentioned, we've, we've sort of made some recordings previously. There's a, This is as part of a series. We've got uh, some fantastic uh, advisors and advice coaches uh, that have just been on previously uh, in the first four episodes of the series. And uh, obviously, you mentioned Conrad. Conrad was uh, was fantastic. Uh, he's got a fantastic business over in WA called Inspired Money. Uh, and he's just uh, like, I mean, what resonated when I spoke to spoke to him was the fact that he has transitioned his basketball coaching background into the same sort of a, a you know motivational coaching for his clients um, and, and accountability, I guess you could like for uh, for his for his clients, uh, and he's sort of just used what he knew in that coaching space to um, to really help his clients. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you don't know this about me, Fraser, but I was uh, an avid soccer player back in my day. In fact, I got into the um, Victorian state team, but then my parents sort of um, said, no, we didn't move to Australia for you to become a soccer player. So, <laughs> so uh, that dream got shattered pretty quickly. But um, yeah, absolutely. You've got a goal, right? You're working with a team. You've got a goal that you want to achieve. And um, and I, and I love that analogy that um, at the end of the sport, at the end of the day, sport is quite similar um, to that coaching, uh, you know, money coaching as well. Yeah. Now I want to bring this this sort of uh, conversation to in as well because we recently had sort of. Uh, um, Glenn from Fox and Hair on uh, mm -hmm. on the podcast, and uh, we really we really broke into the concept of um, you know membership 
you know, having clients siloed by themselves and then having memberships of clients or larger scale um, groups of people and somewhere in between. Uh, and when it comes to that scale conversation, sometimes that, you know, um, that membership or having groups of people is a way. And I certainly know that um, this is sort of something that maybe Andy's looking at when he, when he broadcasts some of his stuff out there. Um, actually having groups and communities of, of clients or prospects uh, coming through. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think um, at the end of the day, you've got to have a few different streams of how you uh, target different different client personas, so to speak. So um, obviously, um, you know, there'll be different types of uh, communities out there that will have their set, um, uh, I guess, achievements or, or goals that they're trying to achieve. And um, it's up to the advisor to, to be able to um, understand that niche and be able to deliver some sort of uh, solution. Yep, fantastic. Now, of course, when we think about the uh, the series um, that we just recorded and uh, uh, with all the speakers, there's a few common themes that sort of popped up with all of those when it comes to thinking about how do we create deeper relationships at scale? Uh, some of those themes are around, you know, systems and processes and uh, some are around the ideas around communication. And of course, a lot of it was based on the idea of, well, you know, to do all those things, we sort of need, you know, a modern business framework with using technology in a smart way, um, having staff, you know, embracing the technology that we're using, all these sorts of things. Uh, let's start with the with, with the sort of the systems side of it and process around you know setting up systems and knowing what you're going to do um what were your thoughts around sort of what, what came out of the first few episodes yeah absolutely when one thing that resonates is when um nicole from king financial group explained that over the years um they've been acquiring a lot of different practices and i think with the exit of a lot of advisors um acquisition hasn't been higher at the moment so what she said was that if you don't have a sound uh, process in place for acquiring new clients, then, you know, you're going to very quickly, you know, I guess run out of control. And that's the problem that I sometimes uh, face when speaking to businesses because, you know, advisors are busy and when they are acquiring more and more clients, if they don't have the right systems and processes in place, uh, they just I guess, run themselves to the ground. And um, it's really important to almost have that helicopter view, step out for a second and say, well, there are some significant significant changes that we need to uh, implement because sometimes it does take about, you know, a good 12 months to implement processes and systems properly into a practice. So it's not a quick win, but you've got to start somewhere. Yeah, it's interesting when in that acquisition process, because I'm, I'm imagining that um, when they acquire businesses, one of the first things that they really need is, is quality data to come in and then they can then, you know, put a system in place to then work out. Uh, and I think as, um, uh, as Karen would mention, you know, understanding who the clients are, understanding the, you know, the targets, understanding, um, you know, being able to, to, to segment all those different um, clients around to this is a, this is a, that type of person. They have these types of problems. We can help them in this type of way. Uh, Tell me about how difficult it's been to get data because I know, uh, you know, we've sort of talked about, we've flirted with this idea of, oh, that's open banking is supposed to have been here, and but really it's not. Uh, but how, how difficult has it been to get quality data? Yeah, um, open banking will, will happen eventually. Uh, at the moment, um, you know, with the likes of Yodley, which is um, obviously a third-party snapshot of, um, of transactions that, that can be pulled through into, uh, into the portal. That gives a good indication of, um, you know, bank balances, credit cards, the everything from property to cars to super to um, retail super funds to portfolios. So it gives a good snapshot of assets and liabilities. So that balance sheet, um, I think advisors are getting more confident in those discussions with their clients. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the easiest way that they um, explain it to their clients is they say, look, this is just like internet banking, but safer because it's a snapshot of your transactions. And in the end, you'll just have one login into the app rather than 20 logins that you've got to log in to obtain all of that information. So, um, so they are getting more confident with their conversations around that. Yeah, fantastic. And what about data from um, some of the other providers? How's that gone? Um, and which providers in particular? 
Uh, some of the um, so not just the banks, but uh, you know the, the the other funds under you know like the funds managers and the and the super funds. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So there's a few ways that um, that we can bring portfolios into um, into, for example, my prosperity, and that's one um, through a. Uh, we've got a two-way integration with X Plan, so if firms are using X Plan for IPS, we can pull that through into My Prosperity. Um, but likewise, we can actually pull through uh, portfolios as well. Uh, there's two ways. There's one way is through the client side, and one way is actually through the practice portal. So we have had some direct integrations um, with some platforms such as Hub24, Netwealth. Um, premium, etc. So we can pull those in as well. So most of those um, portfolios are pretty pretty happy. I think sometimes it takes a little bit longer with some of the the bigger um, institutions, but um, at the end of the day, um, yeah, it's it's available through the client side or the practice portal. Yeah, this is an interesting part coming in through the client side because I guess if you can continue to to prompt the client to keep adding more data or information or what they're doing or how they're spending and all those sorts of things. I guess the data gets better and better and better over time. Yeah, absolutely. Now t- tell us about, um, tell us about the different, uh, the different people that you work with. Cause obviously when we spoke to, um, when we spoke to uh, the, the four different people that we spoke to, they were all sort of in different areas. Some were doing advice, some were doing uh, sort of a coaching, some was doing the compliance. I guess compliance is a big part of what you do. Yeah, uh, absolutely. At the end of the day, um, you know, having, data at your fingertips, right, is quite important. Like proper data constantly updating means that um, you are more compliant because you can extract that data and put it into your, you know, if you're using, say, for example, an X plan or a midwinter, you can actually extract that information from our portal and add it in there. Um, Same as, you know, we've got a new feature called Rooms, which is quite interesting because, say, for example, if an advisor is sitting, say, with a client and it turns out that they need an up-to-date will, they can actually... Uh, create this room, invite the client uh, in, also the uh, solicitor. It's like a it's like a historical chat room where they can add documents, they can sign off on documents, um, they can see the latest documents. So it kind of replaces email in a way, but it's really cool because then you can extract it as a zip file and then add it into your backend system. So. Um, so I guess with my prosperity, when you think about us and a great analogy um, that one of our partners gave us, they said, look, um, I'd never invite my client into the back office. I'd always invite them into the boardroom. So that's where we sort of see ourselves. Um, we're sort of like the boardroom that the that the advisors like to um Know, deal with their clients and um and you know in the in the background we've got the the crm back office solutions that um deal with the compliance side yeah that's a really interesting and it's not obviously not just for estate planning i'm imagining if somebody's you know working with other professionals especially if they're in say uh, you know doing, let's say they're doing a self-managed super fund and they've got to deal with the auditor and they've got to deal with the accountant and all those sorts of people you can sort of set up a room just for that Absolutely. Yeah. Any type of professional. So that's what we're trying to um, connect clients with. Yeah. Well, fantastic. And okay. Well, and it's absolutely with the accountant. That makes sense as well. Um, tell me about, uh, tell me about that, um, the app itself, because a lot of people sort of talked about the app and they sort of talked about the white labeling of the app. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so when I, so when a lot of advisors join up to my prosperity, they typically join up to a smaller package, and then over time, once they get reach a certain amount of clients um, that they've onboarded, uh, they're eligible to get their own custom branded app. We've got some advisors that want that straight away, so you know they want to join up to it, but we sort of encourage firms to join up slowly, get comfortable. Um, now there's an element of being set up properly, um, digitalizing the fact finds, um, making sure that um, the digital doc signing working, making sure that the integration with say X plan or hub 24, whatever it is, is working properly. Um, and then once they've got a clear uh, process plan on, on, on onboarding clients, that's when, um, that's when we, have a look at how many clients they're um, uh, incorporating or introducing my prosperity to, and then at that point in time, um, yeah, they they typically upgrade to their own branded app. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Um, a lot of advisors, you know, this is their portal. It's we're just the technology that's powering it. Um, one one thing to note with my prosperity is that. 
We are in the business to help advisors help their clients. You cannot get my prosperity just off the street like a pocketbook or anything like that. We're, we're here purely to amplify the client journey and review process for advisors with their clients. And at the end of the day, who wouldn't want a cool app on their phone that consolidates all of their personal wealth? I mean, we've got apps like Spotify that consolidate our music, but where's the app that actually consolidates all of our assets, liabilities, cash flow goals? Um, it's incredible. And I think um, when it's used properly, it's just magnificent. Yeah, let's let's get into the bit of the psychology of this because when um, when people get – that scenario of I'm, um, you know, let's say they're in a p- position of I kind of know where I'm up to um, as a consumer. I kind of know where I'm up to, but I'm not focusing on it every day, so I don't really know what my actual spending is or my actual. Tell me about that first part of the process when somebody comes in as a client and gets all of their information together in one place. Uh, then they get a very clear snapshot of exactly where they are now. H- have you have you sort of? seen in any scenarios where that actually is a, is a, where that client actually goes, right, now I feel like I'm in a way better position, even though I haven't done anything. All I've done is just consolidated everything. Yeah. So a lot of advisors, the way that they use my prosperity with their clients is more to say, hey, um, this is peace of mind so that you know that we've wired everything up in the one place for you and not just assets, liabilities, cash flow, but also important documentation like wills and insurances that you hadn't thought about. So God forbid something that happens to you, at least us and your family have access to everything in one place. So it's more about giving clients peace of mind. They've got an app on their phone that they can check at any point in time, but it's not for them to, you know, really sit in there every single day. It's more about the advice journey with the advisor and the advisor hand holding them through that journey. Um, at the end of the day, people need that visibility, especially if they're trying to achieve goals. Um, you know, how do you know if you're on track to achieving a goal if you only see your advisor once a year? And that comes back to scaling the business. It's what are some of the touch points that you have within your firm throughout the year with your clients? Um, I know some people have um, the the newsletters. Um, In My Prosperity, for example, you've got the uh, automated branded reports that you can um, automate for clients. So, you know, showing them once a quarter their consolidated view of all of their assets and liabilities. And it even shows the little pictures, you know, of their um, properties and cars. And people are visual, right? Um, so it's just a nice little touch point, um, you know, uh, to do is I know that um, uh, Nicole from King Financial mentioned that uh, the things that she uses in My Prosperity, uh, things like the the doc signing. So they're, 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 they're pretty big on the digital doc signing. That's been quite popular in terms of, uh, you know, clients being easily, very easily being able to download a uh, obviously the app. So f- first step is to have the app on the phone. They can go in, sign a document very easily. Um, they can upload documents. So what I've noticed too is some advisors are actually telling their clients that this is a secure portal uh, that you can actually drag and drop documents in here and we can securely put documents in here for you. Um, the the to-dos which she uses, so she also mentioned about some of the tasks. So say, for example, if you're still chasing off a client, say, you know, some documentation, et cetera, you can actually send them a push notification and say, hey, I need these documents by this date. And it'll keep popping up until they've done it. The problem with email is sometimes we're too busy or it's late at night. I know I've missed a fair few emails um, where, you know, it's late or you're about to, you know, hop on a call or a, or a meeting and you sort of, forget to get back to that email. Whereas when something keeps flashing and popping up at you, you're more likely um, to complete that task. Um, So I love how she's using that. What I've noticed though, is that it's almost become like a dark horse because obviously advisors behind the scenes, they still spend a lot of time doing small tasks for, uh, for their clients that they don't see. Like say, for example, they might be on the phone to an institution, say for half an hour or an hour Um, on behalf of that client, but the client doesn't really know that. So what I've noticed is that some advisors are using that to do's for themselves because you can actually allocate it to yourself, um, which is pretty cool because then at review time, they can bring it up and say, hey, these are, you know, all the to do's. And um, I think that's really cool. Uh, Obviously, then there's the they use the cash flow as well. So it's really important, regardless whether you're a young accumulator or a pre-retiree, if you're wanting to retire in 10 years time, you really need to know where your money's going. Um, So having, you know, like a pie chart to actually show you 
you know, where the majority of your spend is, it can really um, tend to curb your habits. I mean, I when I joined My Prosperity, um, my partner and I had a uh, an investment property in, oh, well, actually, sorry, it was our principal property in St Kilda East. I don't know if you know um, Melbourne quite well, but it's about five k's from the city, so not too not too far. And that was our first property. And it was quite interesting because when I got the app, I actually thought to myself, wow, I didn't realize we're spending like, you know, over a thousand dollars on restaurants and dining. Like we really got to curb this. It, it's kind of like, you know, you don't realize a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there. It, it all adds up and it does. And, and I've always been great at saving, but I thought we could do so much better. And so through the app, what we ended up doing was we started to pay off double off our mortgage because we thought, hang on a second, if we save in these areas that are problematic, we can actually start paying off our mortgage. And we did. And all our all our friends were in shock that we had five years left on our mortgage when they all had 25 years on their mortgage. So little things like that, um, that can really like having that visibility can really change your mindset. And obviously you deal with a lot of um, money coaches as well. So the power of having that data and being visible and, and helping achieve your goals is quite powerful. Yeah, I think I, you're absolutely right. And it's a perfect story around the, the power of actually focusing on something, the power of having that, that data in your hand to be able to see it and go, okay, so this is what that means. Um, you know, uh, having sort of valuable call outs and to be able to see if you are on track or not on track actually just provides you your own level of motivation to, to get up and do that, doesn't it? It's not, it's not about getting the advisor to do it. It's about the, the client actually self-motivating themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's where a lot of advisors have that power. And when you think about why an advisor went into their role in the first place, it wasn't to, you know, try and figure out how they can make X plan more efficient. It is actually about how they can make a better experience for their clients and help them reach their goals. And I love that that's what um, Andy was uh, explaining as well. Um, That's exactly what he said. He said, Sometimes there's too much focus on the back end and not enough on the client facing. And um, that's sometimes where we've got to pinch ourselves and go, no, hang on a second. This is what we've got to focus on. Yeah, what I love about Andy, his, his drive is about helping. I mean, everyone's, uh, most advisors I speak to, they're, they're drivers for helping mm-hmm. clients. And But Andy's, Andy's at the point where he's like, I'm helping this client. It's the right thing to do, right? Yes. And, 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 and the rest of the stuff follows along. Uh, with that, you know, like um, he doesn't sort of start with, oh, let's start with all of the technical stuff. He starts with helping and uh, what that's, you know, I think he's, he's and, and he, he helps everybody, you know, like it's not just a, with his one-to-many approach around the communications, you know, I think, you know, he's doing a great job of communicating to his tribe of people. Now, I wanted to mention, I wanted to talk about the setup and training because we mentioned that a few times. You've sort of talked about um, people that are using the system in a way, in a smart way where they've taken the trouble to set up their to-dos and their, you know, their automated reports, et cetera, et cetera. That's a big part of any technology, isn't it? When you, when you take on a piece of technology that obviously the ability of the technology is one thing, but if you're not using it properly. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree with that more. And technology can't replace the human element either. Um, instead it will complement it. So that synergy between advisor and technology Um, But it needs to be, like um, Karen mentioned, you can't sometimes focus on all three areas, you know, systems, processes, and technology. Sometimes you've got to highlight one of them and go all in because it's really the initial setup. A good example is uh, a firm here in Melbourne, um, Louise Parker from Financial Lifestyle Managers. Um, She was great. As soon as she joined up to My Prosperity, she had a clear plan that at review time she was going to – you know, onboard all of her clients onto My Prosperity. And it only took her 12 months and she got a branded app. Um, and you know what? She's a one-man band. She's got no, no, you know, she doesn't have 12 CSMs working underneath her. And I thought that was fantastic because it just showed that if you've got the right conversations and the, and the trust with your clients, it will make the positioning of the technology a lot easier because if you're not using it um, or – you think your clients won't like it. It's like, it's like if I went to my accountant and he said, Oh, do you want this app? I'd be like, not really. Um, whereas if you say to them, whereas if you say to them, Hey, hang on a second. Um, you know, part of our process is to 
this is going to make our review process so much easier moving forward because I'm going to give you access to all of your data that's going to be in one place. Um, so at review time moving forward, we'll be able to go through all of this. So it's, it's, it's more about the positioning of the technology to make sure. Um, and I think advisors are getting better. I do. I know that a lot of, um, and in particular, there's the stats that we have with our current clients at My Prosperity, the use, the usage in, in particular, um, we went through the usage stats, um, on Monday and it actually showed us that we've, we've actually had a spike in usage. Um, so it's actually been growing. So each month, uh, we've we've looked at the usage stats and they're growing and we actually had a spike in June which is which is quite interesting but then again a lot of advisors um, this is quite a busy time for them because obviously end of um, financial year but it's quite interesting because the advisors that we do have are using my prosperity quite well so I do think it's getting better um, but yeah it's like with anything um, are, you, are you able to share a bit more about those stats is there is there like a, a amount of time that clients spend on the app so in terms of – so we, we typically try and look at more of the advisor stats, the advisor usage. Um, the feedback we get from a lot of our advisors is they say, look, um, you know, we don't mind if the client logs in, you know, once a month or once a quarter. Um, this app is really about um, them having that peace of mind that they've got everything wide up in one place, right? And it's going to make uh, the review process so much more seamless because in the end, it's better for us because it's more efficient because it means that we've got all the uh, information at our fingertips. We don't have to constantly chase them. So it really depends. I mean, every client's different. You'll have, if you look at a client base, you'll have clients like, for example, yourself, you know, you might be really tech savvy and love it and, and really be keen into um, looking into the app and, and, and all of, you know, your updates, etc. cetera. Um, but essentially what we find is it's more beneficial um, in terms of uh, the advisor being able to have all of that information and being able to then help their clients and show their clients very easily and that historical view as well. So over time, they'll be able to say, oh, you know, your net wealth's grown by X percent and, you know, it, it's it's quite powerful from that from that standpoint. Yeah, so you mentioned the word mindset earlier. So there's obviously a big um, a big learning curve for an advisor taking on any new technology um, and around working out how they're going to position it, how they're going to um, use it in their business, how they're going to talk to their clients about it, uh, all those sorts of things. Uh, what are you seeing out there with um, advisors that are embracing technology in their process? Flourishing. I think um, I think those that have really embedded technology into their process, um, it takes time. It's not going to happen straight away. You have to be patient. Um, but, you know, firms like, for example, Conrad that have been with us for five years, like he said, um, and I really loved uh, this quote, but he said, um, either technology will either make you money or save you money. And I loved when he said that because he's actually he's actually um, getting both out of the out of the technology yeah. now. So I think that initial in, in, the initial investment um, of technology and spending the time to make sure that it's set up properly, it will definitely um, allow for for future growth and and that scalability. Yep, and and mind, you're right. He's got the right mindset. Tell me about the mindset around a lot of some some planners when they're thinking about taking on technology. It might be scary for them because um, they have a they might be thinking in their mind that their clients they have to adapt. Their clients have to adapt or, or change or do something, and it's going to be a big change process. But uh, but a lot of clients are already embracing technology in many ways, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. It was so funny. I mean, obviously. Um, us being in Melbourne, so so my prosperity is HQ is in Melbourne, and, and we spent a big chunk of last year, obviously in lockdown, um, and it, it was quite interesting because I had firms that were sort of hesitant to to, uh, to to obviously start the process with my prosperity, actually come back to me during lockdown, um, and say, hey my clients are asking me for Zoom links. This is unreal. Um, we need to get an app. They're asking us if we've got an app that they can log into. And <laughs> it was just interesting how COVID really accelerated the adoption of technology. 
Yes, yeah, certainly did, and and uh, you're absolutely right. And I don't think that's going to change. That's that's the new normal. Everyone's talked about the idea of getting back to normal. I think we're moving forward to the new normal uh, when it comes to embracing technology. And of course, that also meant that a lot of businesses could have a uh, you know, could grow their businesses in areas that weren't geographically close to them. Absolutely, and there's a lot of uh, firms out there that have clients that are in regional areas or you know interstate. So. You know, I think sometimes you can actually be more efficient if you have five Zoom meetings in one day rather than, you know, trying to have three by traveling. So, so absolutely, I think the even the hybrid model of working from home, um, most companies have had to adopt that because it's just the, the new normal. Um, you shouldn't be expected to be in the office all the time. I think that's long, long dead now. Um, and, you know, technology has been a big driver of that. So, and I think what we can see from the you know the last twelve to you know twelve months plus is obviously the the adoption of technology can be quite rapid, but it also sort of takes a bit of time to 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 get through to all of your clients. You mentioned before the the concept around you know over the over a twelve month period, uh, you know Louise managed to bring um, the uh, you know the my prosperity into all of her clients. Talk, talk to me about that um, that time you would expect if an advisor wanted to implement a new system in, or a new technology in their process. Um, th- we mentioned the concept of going back and setting it all up properly and understanding exactly in the training that's involved with understanding exactly how it's worked and how you're going to get the most out of it and then that that sort of that 12 month implementation process. Yeah, so um, so I guess there's two factors involved. Um, some of the firms that are starting out that don't have existing clients, um, they're the ones that will uh, do quite well because it's just part of their fixed fee process so they can implement that structure very clearly at the beginning. Um, and then obviously with clients like Louise who were um, – you know, I, I guess onboarding existing clients and mind you, all her clients are pre-retirees, um, but the positioning of it at review time um, and onboarding them, and it's very quick and easy to onboard someone onto my prosperity. It's just a matter of adding their assets and liabilities and over time you can add more if you like into it because it's quite a feature-rich platform. You know, she's, it's all came back to um, how she made her clients feel. And I think the relationship, and I think that's where it comes back to the deeper client relationships because she has quite very deep relationships with her clients. They've got that element of trust. Um, one of my very favorite um, poets, Maya Angelou, um, one of my favorite poems is, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I think that's quite important um, in any aspect of your life, whether you're a financial advisor or a good friend or a nurse. Um, At the end of the day, it's how you make someone feel. So that genuine curiosity, um, asking substantial questions, um, how you make a person feel. Uh, One of my good friends, and you probably know her quite well, um, Fraser, Kim Payne. She obviously presents, yes, yeah, she presents at a lot of um, IFA events and um, she's a mentor to a lot of uh, different firms and you'll have to listen to it, but she she has presented on snorkeling versus scuba diving and the whole concept is about those advisors that have that genuine curiosity, asking sub- substantial questions, really dive deeper into what their clients are trying to work, achieve. Um, and then I think if you can nail that, um, the rest will fall into place. Yeah, absolutely. And that sort of also comes back down if we're using technology in that space, um, using the data in a smarter way to, to be able to then discover those the things that we really need to ask deeper questions on. And, and as you said before, go deep diving into a, into a curious realm of, you know, what is, what is that thing that's happened over there? And what is that, what is that, that one thing that we can help that person with and, and, and really getting to know, to know those clients almost uh, in a way will know their personal, uh, their financial world almost better than they know it. Mm-hmm. Now, now talk to me about the the idea because as as we go down this general curiosity around understanding their data and feelings, um, one of the biggest things that comes out of any software is this personalized, timely, and relevant uh, information for call outs. How do, how does the technology partner provide these sorts of things? How do they work out if it's personalized, timely, and relevant? Sure. Um, well, in my experience um, with my prosperity, because it's a, a branded portal, for example. Um, 
you know, it's a, it's the client's brand that's going out. So like I um, mentioned earlier about the automated reports, um, having a nice little touch point going out once a quarter. Uh, I've had feedback from advisors saying that they've actually stopped sending newsletters to clients and not all, obviously some still do. Um, and, and I think it's still quite important. Um, but I've noticed some have stopped because they said, especially some of the advisors that are very time poor, they've just said, you know what, this is great because they don't really read my generic newsletters. However, when they get an automated report about them, of course, they're going to click in and read it because it's all about the client. So they've loved that time saving there because it's a nice little touch point once a quarter that their clients are getting. Um, and it's scalable. At the end of the day, it just, you know, ticks over in, in the in the portal. And um, I think that's quite, um, uh, I guess, an, a unique proposition to, to clients saying, hey, I don't have to do this for you, but I think it's just a nice little gesture of showing you where you're at at the moment. Yeah, to me, it's almost, obviously to me, I sort of call them sort of a progress type approach of understanding where you're up to now. Creates a great little bit of motivation, whether it's negative or positive <laughs> motivation uh, for the client to sort of remind them about what they're focused, keep them focused on what they wanted to achieve and and um, and give them a little reminder of where they're up to so that they can, and, and, and remember, the interesting part about this is if the news is good, it's good. If the news is bad, it's still good. It's still motivational, right? Because it's from the client point of view. So when advisors want to um, set up uh, My Prosperity, uh, talk, talk to me about the process. Is it, is it long? Is it um, How long does it take? It's really easy. So on our website, we've got a sign up button. So all they do, it's all online. There's no contracts that they've got to fill out. They just click on sign up. Um, it depends what package they need. So usually what I do is I help them through that process. It's more about understanding their practice to then um, suggesting the right package for them. Um, and so once they've chosen that package, they sign up. Uh, the sign up process is really simple. They just put in their, you know, business name, name, email address, and make sure that they have a copy of their logo. Um, once they've um, paid for it, they'll uh, have instantaneous access into their practice portal where they can start setting up some uh, initial, um, I guess, display names and, and, and start having a little bit of a play around. Um, then our onboarding team or our account management team will send through like a welcome pack email and they'll also give them a call, um, make sure that they set in a onboarding time with them. So usually that's a few days later. Um, and what that entails is to actually go through it, make sure that they understand, you know, the con configuration process such as X plan, send through their um, mini fact finds and fact finds and, um, and, uh, yeah, and once we start to fully configurate their practice portal, that's when they can start slowly introducing, um, the end user accounts to their client base. So it doesn't take long at all. It's really about how quickly the advisor wants to go. Sometimes we've got advisors that are qu quite eager and want to get things done quite quickly. So it happens within a few days. Um, and then we've got others that are happy for it to happen, you know, over say, two weeks but um but initially it's not that long to get someone set up it's really quick and easy we've got a great team we've got an onboarding um, account management team plus separately we've got a tech support team so say for example if an advisor is having issues connecting like a data feed into the portal um, we've got a great su uh, tech support team that can um, help quite quickly so um so yeah so we've got a really good support mechanism around Fantastic. And you mentioned the word integration there before too. <laughs> Tell me about your integrations. Yes, that is the key word, isn't it? Integrations. Um, so we've we've done an X-Plan integration. So we've got a two-way balance sheet integration with X-Plan. We can also pull across the insurance um, data across. Uh, we've also got a very new hot off the press midwinter integration. We're currently working through a uh, Salesforce integration I believe we're in talks with Advisor Logic and perhaps Work Sorted, but everything is based on demand. So the more advisors we have using those backend systems, the the more quickly we'll um, uh, integrate with them. So uh, so that's why, hence, um, a lot of our advisors, well, majority of our advisors use X Plan. Hence, why that was um, the first integration there. Fantastic. And you mentioned security, having a secure portal a couple of times. This is obviously a massive thing for financial planners. Uh, tell us about what you're doing in that space. 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's not cheap. We spend about you know five hundred thousand dollars on on security every year. So it's not cheap. Um, we use Amazon Web Services Data Center, which is up in Sydney, um, and we have our ISO certification. So for anyone that doesn't um, understand that, that's just it means that we've got our highest global. So not the high standards only in Australia, but also globally because we did do a soft launch. Um, globally. So that's quite important. Um, so we take security very seriously in the 10 years that we've been around, we've never had any issues around security. And obviously we've continually paying, um, at Amazon web services. We've got, um, you know, uh, pen you know, penetration testers that try and hack into our servers. And so, um, so no, we're, we're very comfortable. We've got, uh, not only our head of tech, Stephen Jackal, but we've also got, um, very new, probably we hired him about two, three months ago, um, head of product now as well. So we're really excited because we're right on that cusp where we're about to elevate the portal's capabilities. So watch this space. Yeah, fantastic. It's good. That's good to hear. The ISO certification is absolutely, um, a, you know, a great thing to have um, for the peace of mind of planners, understanding that when you are, you know, bringing people's clients' data in, it needs to be safe and secure. Well, KK, thank you so much for coming on and chatting to us today. I really appreciate you coming on and, and summing up some of the some of the great stuff we heard in this deeper client relationships at scale series. Uh, and thank you for representing um, my prosperity in this this series. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we leave? No, that's all. Um, thank you so much for having me uh, on this show. And um, yeah, I can't wait to to hear all the podcasts again. Fantastic. And if somebody wants to reach out and get hold of you, what's the best way? Uh, absolutely. You can um, just get on get onto our website. If you click in book a demo, um, I'll be able to uh, give you a call and um, have a bit of a, a chat with you. Wonderful. Thank you, KK. Really appreciate it. Thanks.
drop me a line. Connect with me on LinkedIn. So, you know, go, go to Karen Hendry. Again, it's Karen with a, with a C. Um, and I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn, uh, be part of your community. And I'd love to have you as part of my community as well. That's probably the easiest ways to, to get in touch with, with me. Just, you know, one to one. Just yeah, say hi. Just say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Karen. Really appreciate you coming on, talking to us to all things around sexy systems and technology and, and, and segmenting and, and communications with clients. Really appreciate it. My absolute pleasure. As I said, at the moment, I'm a speaker without a stage. So I really appreciate having these opportunities to be, because for me, my why is all about that extended reach and that impact. I know what it's like to spend the time building business so if i can do anything that um, helps people to do it easier and faster then my job is done so thank you for the opportunity fraser thanks Kirsten.